today we will spend some time on reviewing what we have done so far and work out some problems uh, in the area that we have discussed so far so that we can understand the subject much more uh, deeply and also it will uh, work as a uh, test. So, what I do is uh, I will uh, work out some problems regarding transistor applications and then I will also work out some problems uh, using uh, operation amplifiers. <coughs> so, that you can uh, uh, you will be able to appreciate the subject much more deeply. So, uh, let us see the application of transistors first. So, for that let us take uh, transistor as an amplifier, if we want to design a transistor amplifier, how we go about doing that? Transistor as an amplifier. Now, if we want to design a transistor amplifier, then I fix the spec. So, let me have the spec for the design. So, I want transistor amplifier, input signal is 0 0.1 volt. 0.1 volt, then I want amplification by a factor of 10, amplification required is uh, 10, assume signal frequency, frequency is uh, 1 kilohertz, then supply voltage, supply voltage is say uh, we have say 10 volt is the supply voltage that we have. And then I have to have a load, for example, uh, uh, what is the load that it is supposed to deliver this uh, amplified voltage. So, load uh, so load resistance is like it as 10 k. So, what we want is we have to design an amplifier using a transistor. So, I have uh, this amplifier stage here and this input signal is given here that is the input signal that is in point 0.1 volt and then 1 kilohertz. The output is here, the output is supposed to be loaded to 10 k. So, at 10 k I should get 1 volt uh, AC supposed to come, uh, come out. So, how we go about designing this? So, we if you look at the general transistor amplifier configuration that looks like this, you have the transistor, then you have this resistance and then the load collector load resistance and then this is supply voltage plus 10 volt and that is uh, grounded here. Then we have the two passing uh, resistances. This is load is supposed to be 10 k. And then this is the output voltage, and our input signal is supplied here. This is a 0 0.1 volt, 1 kilohertz. So this is our uh, uh, next. Uh, that is the uh, uh, this is the actual circuit that uh, we will be using here. And only thing is, we have to decide on uh, these resistances. Resistance value, say, I will take it as R1, uh, R2 or uh, I will call R e, then uh, this is uh, uh, I, I will put it as R 2, then R 3 and then we have C input capacitor, C output capacitor we have uh, this one. So, we are expert now in all these uh, designs, it is better to keep the operating point that is this point at mid value of the power supply, power supply voltage is uh, 10 volt. So, select this uh, I call this point A. So, without any signal, without any input signal, keep this uh, point A at uh, of the supply voltage. So, our uh, uh, policy would be that maintain, maintain A at V supply by 2 that is equal to 5 volt. When V input is equal to 0, when there is no input voltage, then make sure that 
the point A is at uh, 5 volt that is the first step that we have to uh, keep it. Now, uh, to make get that one we had select this uh, R 1 and R E, R 2, R 3 values. Now, first what we have to do is uh, you know this uh, uh, 10 k uh, 10 k acting as a load when there is a when we are applying a AC voltage uh, here uh, when we are applying a AC voltage here then we are getting amplified AC voltage here and that AC voltage actually flows through this. So, this is acting as a load. So, uh, when current is uh, flowing through that uh, flowing through that that current actually comes through that. So, effectively this uh, R 1 is getting loaded by uh, uh, this uh, load that is uh, this 10 k. So, we have to make sure that R 1 is much smaller than this uh, 10 k uh, then only uh, the loading effect can be minimized. So, normally factor of 10 is taken uh, uh, in consideration. So, uh, to neglect the loading effect that means, if this is 10 k then obviously, if this loading effect not to be seen means R 1 uh, should be 1 k. So, our first step would be consider the load and then fix R 1 uh, uh, 10 times lower than that. So, uh, uh, fix, uh, uh, fix R 1 10 times lower than lower than load uh, which, which is 10 k that is uh, in this case R 1 is supposed to be 1 k. So, I will fix R 1 as 1 k. Once R 1 is fixed then it is easy to fix uh, uh, R e because the gain is actually given by the ratio between these two. Gain is ratio between R 1 and R e. So, the R 1 and R e ratio is the gain. So, uh, since R 1 is fixed R k can be fixed. So, gain is actually gain is R 1 by R e. So, R 1 is 10 k. So, R e automatically comes to be 100 ohms. So, R e is fixed R 1 is fixed. Now, if it is a, if this is the case then now we have to fix the other two resistors that is R 2 and R 3 that is uh, R 2 R 3 these two bias resistors that is uh, these two bias resistors to be fixed. Now, we know this is 100 ohms that means, we had find out what will be the voltage at the emitter. Now, uh, midpoint you know we had taken that uh, uh, this is at 5 volt because A is taken as 5 volt uh, that is what our starting point. So, if this is 5 volt when there is no AC here then 5 volt that means, voltage across R 1 is uh, 5 volt okay, this is 10 and this is 5. So, if I look at this, so this point is at 5 volt this is at 10 volt. So, voltage across R 1 is uh, 5 volt. So, current through this is resistance is so 1 k. So, current through this is 5 milli ampere. So, current through this R e also almost 5 milli ampere because the neglecting the base current effect then if this 5 milli ampere current is going 5 milli ampere current is going through this. So, the next step is finding the current through R e. So, what is the current through R e? What is the current in R e? That is the question. So, the current in current in R 1 is equal to current in R e. So, current in R 1 is equal to R 1 is actually 10 minus 5 divided by 1 k that is 5 milliamps. So, current through R 1 is uh, 5 milliampere. So, current through R e also 5 milliampere. So, current through R e is equal to 5 milliamps. So, current in R e is known. So, we can always find voltage across R e. So, voltage across R e comes. If you know 100 ohms into 5 milliamps. 
that is 0 0.5 volt. So, the uh, uh, voltage at R e is uh, uh, 5 milliampere. So, if I go back the circuit and see now what we are got is that uh, uh, voltage at this point is becoming 0 0.5 volt. That is when there is no AC signal voltage at this point is 0 0.5 volt is coming. Then we know that if this is 0 0.5 and this is supposed to be sitting at 1.1 volt. So, we call this V B voltage at the base is 1.1 volt. So, we can write that that is a, that actually brings that voltage at the base to 1.1 volt. So, voltage voltage at the base of the transistor base is equal to 0.5 plus 0.6 volt that is equal to uh, 1.1 .1 volt. So, we arrived at the base voltage then we had also find out what will be the base current because we had now fixed the other R 1 and R 2. So, we know the now voltage at base now I should know what is the base current because our idea is if uh, this current whatever is flowing through this the current that is flowing through this must be much more than the base current to neglect the effect of the base current otherwise we have to iteratively calculate that is not required. So, we can find what is the base current. So, we know the uh, current through this is 5 milliampere because we have taken this is voltage at this point 5 volt that means 5 milliampere current was flowing through this 5 milliampere current is flowing through this. If 5 milliampere is the emitter current then base current will be 5 milliampere divided by HFE say that is taken as I take 100 as HFE for the transistor then uh, we can calculate the base current. So, next we calculate the base current. So, base current calculation we have to do that can be done like this. So, the uh, to find the base current. So, emitter current is known emitter current divided by uh, beta of the transistor is the base current. base current. So, the uh, so the that means the base current comes out to be the base current would be this current to be 5 milliampere divided by H F E. So, that is beta. So, that actually equal to 5 milliampere divided by 100 uh, that uh, comes out to be 50 microampere. So, we got the base current. So, once base current is known I can uh, decide on the uh, other uh, the current through R 1 and R 2 where this uh, R 2 and R 3 sorry. So, the base current is uh, now taken as 50 microamps that is the current that is flowing here. So, if this current uh, should be smaller compared to this means I keep this current as 500 microampere. So, current through R 2 R 3 need to be 500 microampere. So, uh, I may current through uh, uh, now I find out current through the R 2 and R 3. So, current through R 2 and R 3 uh, this is only decided this is this is to be kept to be kept. 10 times more than the base current. This can be kept 10 times more than the base current that actually can be kept as 500 microamps or equal to 0.5 milliamps. So, now we are very close to our uh, uh, design because now we got the R 2 R 3 uh, current and then voltage across uh, R 3 that is uh, uh, if you see the circuit the voltage across R 3 is 1.1 1 .1 volt see the voltage across R 3 R 3 is 
uh, one point one volt, and we know the current through this. The current through this is 500 microamps. So then we can find out the value of R3. Once value of R3 is known, R2 can be computed because we know the voltage across R2 because this 1.1. If this is 10, then we know roughly 8.9 volt is what is there, and current through this is 0.5 milliampere. So we can decide on uh, R2. For example, uh, if we take this 1.1 divided by 0.5 milliampere, roughly 2.2 k is coming here, and then this is actually roughly 9 volt, and then 9 volt divided by 0.5 milliampere gives us 18 k for R2. So, 18 k and 2.2 k uh, uh, will give me 1.1 volt here, and this amplifier will uh, nicely amplify uh, this voltage that is the say input voltage by a factor of 10 and the amplified voltage will, that is 0.5 volt will be appearing across V0 with 180 degree phase reversal. So, voltage uh, now we can complete the design. So, voltage across R3 is 1.1 1 .1 volt and the current through R3. R3 is 0.5 milliamps. So, R3 actually comes 1.1 divided by 0.5 that is 2 point milliamps that equal to 2.2 k. Similarly, uh, uh, voltage across R2 that is actually a 10 minus 1.1 that is 8.9 volt and the current uh, uh, through R2 through R2 is again 0.5 milliampere. So, R2 comes 8.9 divided by 0.5 milliamps that comes 17.8 k. So, 18 k would be fine. So, uh, that is how the design goes. So, if you look at the values, so we will get R1 as actually uh, uh, 1 k then R e comes as 100 ohms, then R 2 coming as 18 k and then uh, R 3 is coming as uh, uh, 2.2 k. That is how this uh, amplifier is designed. So, one can work out in the same line uh, depending upon the supply voltage and the signal level and so on. One can always find uh, uh, the, do the same design, but one should be careful that when the voltage uh, at the collector, if you for example in this case, uh, this amplifier uh, works all right up to some point beyond which that you know uh, it does not work. The limitation is that if I increase this by per uh, say uh, increase this uh, voltage to say 1 volt, then I expect to get here. Uh, 5 volt uh, 10 times amplified that will be 10 volt amplified voltage supposed to come and that cannot happen because the supply itself 10 and what we are kept is only 5 volt as a operating point here. So, this works at 0 0.1 volt and it gives you here 0.5. If I give here 0.2 then I will get 1 volt. Then when I try to go beyond that then you will have problem because uh, maybe I will get up at the point here 2 volt swing or 3 volt swing maximum I can expect not beyond that. So, you can go at the maximum 0 0.3 volt here uh, at the maximum uh, like uh, in this design. So, one can uh, get different values of R1, RE, R2, R3 depending upon this uh, uh, supply voltage and the input voltage uh, level that is expected. And of course, the load also plays a uh, dominant role. Then only thing is that uh, capacitors to be selected for C in and C out. The impedance of C1 and C2 must be small compared to the loads that they are seeing. This capacitor is seeing uh, uh, the seeing this R2, R3, uh, a parallel current R2, R3 as a load ratio. So, the impedance of this uh, uh, C in should be much smaller at 1 kilohertz frequency compared to R2, R3. Similarly, the impedance given by uh, this must be much smaller compared to the uh, load resistance so that not much voltage is uh, lost. So, we are decided on uh, C in and C out.
So, how to decide on C 1 and C in and C out? So, we had find uh, C in what is the value and the C out what is the value. So, for this to find what is the input impedance. So, the input impedance is input impedance impedance of the amplifier impedance uh, impedance of the amplifier actually is going to R 2 parallel R 3 then actually you have a parallel 100 ohm into parallel uh, 100 ohm multiplied by beta that is also coming in because when the if you look at the uh, amplifier I will redraw the amplifier here redraw the amplifier here. So, if you look at the amplifier again we have here 1 k and then this is uh, taken as 18 k and this is taken as uh, 2.2 k this is 100 ohms and then we had find this C out and this is 10 k this is C in this is 1 kilohertz 0.1 that is impedance that is 1 by C omega should be much smaller compared to parallel combination of these two and the reflected resistance of this emitter appears here because if I draw the input impedance there is nothing but parallel combination of this, this and then reflected resistance of this 100 ohm. The reflected resistance of the 100 ohm is 100 into HFE. So, the input uh, uh, looks like this, the input circuit looks like this. So, you have uh, uh, this re, uh, source with the, this impedance, then you have the 2.2 k parallel 18 k, 18 k and then parallel this 100 into beta that is actually uh, 10 k. So, uh, in this case if you see this 2.2 k uh, da is a dominant uh, uh, because if you take the 10 k and 18 k uh, that is much higher than this 2.2 k. So, one can take roughly 2 k as the impedance of uh, 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 impedance of the uh, input impedance of the source. So, we uh, take this is equivalent to 2 k. So, input impedance is input impedance, impedance is uh, 2 k. So, the capacitors should have much lower in the than 2 k. So, 10 times lower. So, the I can take 1 by C omega. So, 1 by C omega should be uh, 200 ohms 10 times lower I had taken and the omega is actually uh, 2 pi into 10 power 3 2 pi f at 1 kilohertz. So, one can find uh, C. So, uh, uh, you will get uh, 1 by uh, 200 into omega that comes as uh, C. So, you will get uh, uh, 1 by 200 into 2 pi into 10 power 3 comes as uh, C, C input rather, C input. So, if I take this one that actually comes uh, 1 by 10 power ma minus 5 this 3 plus 2 5 gone. So, you have 2 into 2 pi will be here. So, that will be 10 power minus 5 divided by 4 pi is roughly 12 uh, it comes. So, uh, uh, you need uh, 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 this uh, 10 power minus 5 sorry 10 power minus 5 by uh, 4 pi. So, that will be uh, 10 power minus 6 roughly uh, farad that is 1 microfarad is required for C in. So, you need we get decide C in as nearly 1 microfarad is what is required. Similarly, we have to calculate for C out. So, calculation for C out. So, the uh, equivalent circuit is that you have a output voltage passing through this resistance C out and going to uh, 10 k that is a C out. So, C out should be much smaller than uh, uh, 
uh, 10 k. So, roughly C out supposed to come 10 times lower. So, I will put it as uh, 1 k. So, uh, uh, the impedance of the C out would be 1 k. supposed to be 1 k. So, that 1 by uh, C omega comes to be uh, roughly 10 power 3. So, we will get and uh, omega is as usual that uh, 2 pi in 10 power 3. So, you will end up 1 by uh, C into 2 pi into 10 power 3 is equal to 10 power 3. So, you will have 1 by 2 pi into 10 power 6 as C coming in. So, that actually comes out to be uh, 10 power minus 6 divided by 2 into roughly a 3. So, uh, 10 power minus 7 into 10 by 6 that is uh, 1.4 into 10 power minus 7 which actually turns out to be uh, So, the C value uh, comes out to be C out rather C out uh, C out comes to be uh, 0.14 microfarad. So, we are now arrived at all the values for the circuit. So, if you look at the uh, amplifier design now it looks like this you have this here connected here uh, under ohms then here we have to put uh, 1 k, then here we have put 0.1 microfarad, 0.14 microfarad, then we have the load resistance of 10 k, this is given a plus 10 volt that is ground, and we had these two resistances, this is 18 k and this is 2.2 k, and then have this and apply the voltage here and this is uh, put as 1 microfarad. That is how the uh, circuit design is completed. So, the amplifier can be designed uh, step by step using this uh, procedure uh, uh, so that the required performance is uh, obtained. Of course, we are not drawn the equivalent circuit of uh, uh, this transistor uh, to by taking care of uh, Miller effect capacitor and so on that is right, right, not required right now at this point because nowadays we do not design this kind of amplifiers uh, 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 this kind of amplifiers which we because we normally use uh, operation amplifiers. This is only to illustrate how the amplifier is working we are done this exercise. In actual case actually we have to consider uh, there is a capacitance uh, across this and because of this capacitor the output voltage is partially put back to this and then uh, uh, that uh, applies the voltage here uh, reduces the voltage at this point that also reduces the voltage at this point. But uh, this capacitor effect uh, this capacitor effect is not significant at uh, 1 kilohertz. So, only not worry about that in high, um, uh, high frequency amplifiers they do not have to worry about uh, the effect of uh, this as well. So, at this point we are not looking at the design of high frequency amplifier. So, we are not bothered about uh, uh, this capacitor effect. Now, let us see uh, uh, another ex uh, design example namely how to use the transistor uh, as a switch and for switching applications. Uh, uh, so, that we can uh, use the transistor along with the probably the MOSFET at very many different places in analog circuit uh, uh, as a switch. So, for example, I want to drive a relay example, uh, driving a relay uh, using a transistor uh, we uh, we look into this design at this point of time. So, how to design a, how to design a uh, relay driver using transistor. So, the uh, circuit that we are thinking is like this we have a relay assume this is a 12 volt relay 
and I have a supply of say plus 12 volt. And then this relay is a relay is actually nothing but you have a coil and then it has a contact. So, when coil is energized the contact is uh, pulled uh, uh, closed when the coil is switched off the contact is open. So, that this contact can be used to carry some load current. So, for example, I can put a load like this. So, whenever the current flows through this coil this contact will be energized and the current will be flowing through this. When you stop the current flowing through this the contact will be open and the relay will be off. So, this is the uh, relay part actually. So, this is to be switched on and off using a transistor. So, I can use this, I can put this, then uh, now uh, we also have to have this. I will explain about this use of this diode. Without this diode, the uh, trans invariably goes bad. We put this, then we have, have a signal coming in, you know, if the for example, another operation amplifier assume is there, and that gives you the signal to switch on this. So, when this is high, it will be plus 15, when this is um, low, it will be minus 15. So, we want when the output is plus 15. Uh, the relay should be on when the output is minus 15 the relay should be off that is what uh, we are planning to do. So, uh, writing the problem statement actually what we want is uh, I will put a point here ok I write here that is uh, when uh, V output of op amp op amp is plus 15 relay should be on. V output up 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 is minus 15 relay should be off. Relay should be off. Uh, so, assume that we had given out the uh, that means how will you complete the circuit. So, I had to complete the circuit by linking the base to the uh, this one to the base. So, I will put one diode then plus I put one resistance here. So, I call this is R 1, this is R 2. So, the diode uh, you have two diodes D 1 and D 2. So, D 1 actually uh, when the minus comes uh, it does not allow the voltage to go in uh, go to the base when it plus 15 comes it allows the voltage to go on then that will switch on this. Now, only thing is we have to select uh, what is the value for R 1 and R 2 then we also should explore why you need D 2. So, of course, uh, without D 1 also it can work, but it is not a good design you know uh, banging a minus on the transistor and if the transistor uh, you know base center voltage exceeds the 7 volt most of the transistor actually goes bad if the current is not limited. Of course, you have a current limiting resistance here uh, of course, uh, so it may not go bad, but nevertheless it is uh, not necessary to design like that it is a uh, considered as a bad design uh, banking minus and the transistor which is not required. So, uh, we have decided basically R 1 and R 2. Now, for this uh, to decide we should know what is the current that base is taking. So, we should decide on the base current. Now, base current uh, we have to decide then I should know the uh, collector current. So, uh, without worrying about temperature I will first fix what is the collector current required. So, we have to find the collector current of the transistor. Collector current of the transistor. So, that is actually collector current is nothing but the load current, relay current. So, collector current current is nothing but a relay current. Now, the relay current is given by the manufacturer, relay manufacturer because only if that much current flows the uh, relay will be activated. So, assume the relay current is in this case uh, let the relay current be current 
current V 100 milliamps. So, we need 100 milliampere current that to flow through the uh, relay, then only the relay will activate the uh, contacts. So, uh, taken the relay current. So, now once the relay current is known, the collector current of the transistor is known that is 100 milliampere. So, I C collector current is actually 100 milliampere. Then, uh, transistor base current that will be I C by beta, that will be 100 milliampere divided by assume beta is 100, then it will be 1 milliampere. So, you end up in having a base current of 1 milliampere. Uh, uh, in this design. So, once base current is known, then uh, it would be easier to decide on the two resistors that is um, R1 and R2, because now this current is known. So, uh, the, this current is 1 milliampere. That means, uh, if it is 1 milliampere and then we know when the trans is on, this voltage is 0 volt we ground it and this will go to 0 0.6 volt. So, if this is uh, 0.6 volt and we know the current is 1 milliampere, the same 1 milliampere current is flowing through that and then we know the uh, uh, this resistance R2 is used uh, only to discharge the uh, uh, when it when the uh, voltage goes minus this becomes 0, but then storage charge in the transistor that is you know the base emitter you have a capacitance that to be discharged for that only we are using R2. So, the R2 is actually uh, can be large that is no problem because for example, if this is a few PF capacitor taking R2 say for example, 10 K uh, makes you know the discharge time is of a few millisecond or even less than that, it will be only few nanosecond that kind of uh, off time is fine because the capacitor of 100 PF and then 10 K 100 PF is 10 power minus 10. 10 k is uh, uh, 10 power 4. So, you will have a switching time of uh, uh, 0.1 millisecond. So, if the capacitance with base emitter capacitor is uh, 100 p f. So, uh, for base emitter capacitor cap of 100, 100 p f for R2 is equal to uh, uh, 10k, then switching then uh, off time, off time comes to be 10 power minus 10 in 10 power uh, 4, that comes 10 power minus 6 seconds, which is quite fast. So, or need not go uh, much larger than uh, 10k. So, uh, if it is not enough, we can readjust, but this R2 is in our control, we, this is our selection. So, uh, we can select even larger value if the time uh, is uh, very short. So, this is fine. So, R2 is fixed. So, uh, we got R2 as 10k. So, which leaves us only to decide the other resistance that is uh, R1. So, because this resistance is 10 k now and we have decided on this value now. Now, this is a 10 k that means, this is a voltage across at this point is uh, 0.6 volt. So, current through this is 0.6 by 10 k. So, current this is 1 milliampere current is going and here 0 0.6 by uh, 10 k. So, the current here, the current I here would be 0 0.6 divided by 10 power 4 that will be 0 0.6 into 10 power minus 4 that will be equal to 6 into 10 power minus 5 amps that will be equal to uh, 60 microamps or in uh, milliampere wise that comes 0 0.06 milliamps that is the current that is flowing when it is on. So, if this is at uh, uh, if this current is 1 milliampere, this current is 0 0.06 milliampere, then total current R1 will be addition of these two. So, the total current R1, so the total current R1 through R1 So, the base current is 1 milliampere 
current is 1 milli ampere, then the resistance R2, R2 is 10 k. Uh, so, uh, current through R2 is current through R2 is actually 0 0.6 by 10 k that was worked out to be 0 0.06 milliamps. So, total current through R2, total current through R1. Through R1 that is equal to uh, 1 milliampere plus 0 0.06 milliamps that is equal to 1.06 milliamps. Now, we have to select the value of R1. So, the, for that to know we should know what is the voltage across R1. So, if you look at the circuit the voltage across R1 is the voltage across R1 we had to design. So, uh, that means we had find the voltage across the R1. So, if you look at the voltage across this R1 we have to find out. So, if this operation on is operated with plus 15 minus 15 normally we will get up to uh, th 14 volt here when it is fully on you will not get 15 uh, uh, normally 2 diode drops less. So, you will have around 14 volt here and one diode drop is lost here. So, you will have here at this point roughly around 13.4 volt and this point is sitting at uh, uh, point 0.6 that means the d uh, uh, the uh, across the r1 resistance at this end we have 13.4 volt at this end we have 0.6 volt that is at this point we have 13.4 and at this end we have 0.6 so voltage across r1 turns out to be 13.4 minus 0.6 that is uh, uh, 12.8 volt so, we will uh, then once you know the voltage across this is 12.8 and I know the current flowing through this which is uh, 1.06 milliampere. So, I can write 12.8 divided by 1.06 uh, that roughly around you will uh, you get around 12 k resistance the 10 k standard resistance available that can be used here. So, if we, uh, that means R 1 needs to be around 10 k. So, that we can uh, do it like this. So, if you saw the calculations it works out to be like this. So, voltage across voltage across uh, R 1 is actually 15 minus uh, 1.2 volt that is across the uh, voltage across the that is lost and the uh, up amp uh, minus 0 0.6 that is on the diode D 1 then minus 0 0.6 that is at the base voltage uh, uh, that is the voltage across the uh, R 1 which works out to be 15 minus 2.4 that uh, turns out to be uh, 12.6 volt. So, current current through R 1. that uh, comes out to be 12.4 uh, 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 that is that is 1.06 milliamps. So, we can write uh, uh, R 1 is equal to 12.4 divided by 1.06 that I can roughly take it as uh, 12 k this is milliamps. So, I can take R 1 as 10 k uh, that 10 k what you get a uh, standard value because it should be little lower than 12 k then only even at uh, high temperature you will able to uh, it able to supply the enough current. So, R 1 to be decided uh, like this. So, we had uh, shown one example for uh, switching that how to design a trans circuit for switching because this kind of uh, uh, switches are very often uh, used nowadays uh, uh, in analog circuit. So, to switch on off a relay or uh, uh, some other circuit. Now, uh, we actually uh, uh, do one more design such that uh, we will understand this uh, uh, circuit design much better. For example, we can do the same design using a, a MOSFET. For example, I want to drive a MOSFET 
I, I want to drive a relay using a MOSFET. So, how will you go about designing this? So, relay drive using a MOSFET. So, the general circuit uh, looks like this. Then I can have this. So, I have this, then assume the same operation on the circuit is there, which gives me the voltage. So, I want to drive the MOSFET here. So, I connect uh, minus, I do not want to apply. So, I can do this, I can put. Uh, uh, connect this one directly, because it is not a current operated device, it is a voltage operated device and this is supposed to be a relay. So, I uh, remove this reasons, I connect the relay. Uh, one small uh, this thing, I did not explain what happened in the other case, what is the function of uh, this diode. So, in this design I will explain the function of uh, this diode uh, in detail. So, uh, if we have uh, this one, so when it is plus 15 volt, uh, when it goes high, you will almost get around 14 volt. So, uh, this is uh, uh, 14 volt you will be getting and then after one diode drop, you will get about 13.6 uh, volt. So, the uh, MOSFET will be on and we need not worry about the current. Then when this goes to minus, uh, uh, when goes to minus say 14 volt, then the, this diode will be off and you will get no voltage here, but then the diode will not allow, but the MOSFET is having a capacitor and that capacitor cannot be discharged. So, even when it goes minus 14, this capacitor will be holding the charge and MOSFET will be continuously on, it will not go back. So, we have to provide a path for the MOSFET to on, go off, so we have to give one resistance here. Because uh, here we are not bothered uh, about the switching speed because we are switching the uh, 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 relay once in a while, you know, once in few seconds or once in a minute only we will be switching. So, the switching uh, time can be few uh, uh, milliseconds is not a problem. So, the switching off time would be uh, this ray capacitor, for example, if it is 100 pf, and then if I, for example, if I have 10 k resistance, then the time would be the RC at time that would be equal to 10 power 4 in 10 power minus 10 that will be 1 microsecond uh, 10 power minus uh, uh, 10. So, the time constant actually comes out 10 power minus 6. So, in few microsecond time in a few uh, time constant it will discharge. So, the off time will be only few microsecond that is uh, good enough for uh, uh, this application. For example, we have a MOSFET BS 170 is there which switches on at 5 volt. 15 volt is not a problem and then the uh, 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 going off is done by this. So, the using a MOSFET designing a switch uh, uh, function is easier, but one problem when using MOSFET is if the supply voltage is small, for example, if the uh, supply voltage uh, the circuit supposed to operate in only plus or minus uh, 2 volt or 3 volt. Uh, low voltage applications, then the output voltage what you get will be will, will not be enough to drive the MOSFET because if you get only 2 volt with 2 volt the MOSFET will not be switched on. Whereas, transistor needs only 0.6 volt to switch, make it on, the base end voltage needs only 0.6 volt. So, even low voltage applications you will not be able to use uh, MOSFET to switch on and off the relay. So, in high voltage applications it can be uh, uh, MOSFET can be used because even BS 170 needs minimum 5 volt to make the uh, MOSFET on and then uh, 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 with 15 volt uh, it can take up to 15 volt. Uh, there is no problem actually uh, applying more than 5 volt uh, to this circuit as long as we are not exceeding 15 volt this is uh, perfectly all right. Uh, only thing is now I have to explain uh, what is the function of this diode which we are not done it even in the uh, other case. So, now we will explain what is the purpose of uh, this diode. So, uh, what we do is function of this diode say the D2. So, what is the function of uh, diode D2?
what is the use of D2? Actually, if you do not use D2, uh, we already explained that this uh, uh, MOSFET or the transistor uh, which is used in the previous example actually goes bad. So, uh, what we do is that uh, uh, we explain the mechanism uh, behind what is happening here. Suppose, if I have a switch here either MOSFET or transistor and if I have the uh, say for example, supply is here plus 15 volt or plus 12 volt. Then when the switch is on, then the current flows through this and then uh, this relay has a uh, uh, current capacity of 100 milliampere we said this relay is having current capacity of 100 milliampere and if this operating voltage is 12 volt, then in actual case the uh, resistance of this coil, the relay has a coil actually, the resistance, the coil, relay is a coil and the coil has a resistance and at 100 milliampere actually if it is a relay specified 100 milliampere and 12 volt then the uh, resistance of the coil, the, the resistance of the coil would be S of the coil would be uh, 12 divided by 100 milliamps that will be 120 ohms. So, the uh, resistance of the coil so, uh, R as a coil is 120 ohms. So, uh, when you switch off and then it also at a inductance. So, uh, if you look at the uh, circuit then it looks like this we have here 10 volt, 10 volt at this point, uh, 10 volt give, uh, 12 volt sorry this relay is operated with 12 volt. So, this is a 12 volt and this is 120 ohms and this is at uh, inductance and when switch is on the uh, the current flowing through that is 100 milliampere because after a long time then current flowing through that will be 12 by 120 that is 100 milliampere that is the current that is flowing through this. And then if you look at uh, this there is a current flow through flowing through the coil and then there is a uh, it has a inductance. So, that energy stored in the inductance is half L i square. So, energy stored in the inductor is half L i square. So, when current is flowing through that, uh, the energy stored, the, if we take the inductance, it will be about 40 to 50 million inductance will be there and I is 100 milliampere. So, certain amount of energy is stored in this and then the current is flowing like this. When you switch off uh, this, for example, either MOSFET or uh, transistor, if I remove the, for example, if it is a transistor, I put the, okay. Uh, so, if I redraw with the transistor, then you have the inductor and then you have the transistor here. It is on this. So, when the uh, current 100 milliampere is going, when I switch off, that is I remove this voltage to 0, take it to 0, then this uh, transistor goes off. Then whatever current that is flowing here uh, cannot go anymore uh, in this. That means, when current was flowing, magnetic field was uh, built up. Uh, in the coil and that energy is actually stored in the magnetic field. Now, I switch off uh, this then the whatever current that is flowing through this I have to find the uh, uh, cannot uh, cannot go through this because it the switch is not allowing that current to flow. So, you are trying to interrupt this flow of current that means uh, the current start decreasing, but then decreasing current will produce a decreasing magnetic field because when current decreases the magnetic field also will decrease. Then decreasing magnetic field will induce a voltage in the uh, coil that is a self induced voltage. So, as soon as I start switching off this the magnetic field started collapsing and collapsing magnetic field induce a voltage in this coil that uh, polarity will be actually aiding the uh, input voltage that if I draw uh, that that polarity will look like this if I remove this and draw the decreasing magnetic field and then uh, draw the voltage that means, I remove that and the decreasing magnetic field will uh, putting a voltage this is the voltage that you applied and then the decreasing magnetic field will apply a voltage like this. This is nothing but uh, L into d i by d t that is the uh, voltage induced in the coil because of the decreasing uh, current because the current is decreasing and then because of that it is inducing a voltage. So, now if I switch off this 
the voltage at this point is sum of this voltage and this voltage. So, this is actually uh, 12 volt, this is actually 12 volt. Uh, this actually depends on what rate that it is switching, what is LDA BDT. Assume the L is say 50 milli entry. So, L is if I take 50 milli entry, then into DA by DT is the induced voltage. So, if I take uh, that then dA by dt I can take for example, this transistor switches off in 1 microsecond that is how we are desired at earlier. So, if the switching off time that is dt is actually uh, 1 microsecond then current actually the change is actually 10 power uh, minus 1 amps because that is equal to 100 milliamps because the relay current is 100 milliampere. We are trying to switch off 100 milliampere current in 1 microsecond. So, that comes out uh, LDA by DT if you calculate so if you calculate LDA by DT uh, that comes out to be 50 milli entry if I had taken then current of 100 uh, milliamps 10 power minus 1 and DT is 10 power minus 6 that works out to be uh, 500 into 10 power uh, 2 that you will get 5000 volt that uh, actually when you try to switch off the inductor uh, uh, abruptly uh, then you get uh, this induced voltage going up to 5000 volt and such a high voltage this transfer cannot withstand because V C E breakdown voltage will be few hundred volt only we would have selected and a 5000 volt destroys this transistor. That actually means that if I am doing, if I am switching the uh, device uh, like this uh, with the transistor, uh, uh, with the, the inductor uh, 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 with this switch, then you get a very huge voltage at this point and that will make the device to go bad. So, if I want to protect, then I have to use a diode here to protect this. Once I put a diode, the problem is solved because now when I switch off the switch, whatever current that is going here uh, trying to flow like this because the when the uh, inductor the current when you are trying to break the current then as I said it induces a large voltage and that voltage is positive here. So, once this voltage goes if this is 12 if this goes more than 12 then this start conducting this forward bias if this is 12 and if the uh, once I switch off the voltage trying to go up this uh, once moment it goes more than 12 uh, then this start conducting. Uh, it start conducting. So, that current will go like this and then go like this and continue to flow and uh, in this region this 120 ohm the heat is uh, the energy is dissipated out. It will take some time to circulate and dissipate all the energy, but nevertheless voltage uh, 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 at this point will not go more than 12.6 because this is 12 and this will be limited to 12.6. So, the device will not go bad that is how uh, that is the use of this level. So, uh, in this class we have discussed uh, how to use the transistor to amplify the signal and how to design various values uh, to go with that and also we had shown how to use the transistor as a switch and how to use the MOSFET as a switch and that also we had shown uh, in this class and I also explained you what is the use of uh, the diode which is to be connected across the uh, relay coil uh, also explained. So, with this I will uh, stop the next class we see uh, other uh, worked out examples. Thank you.